so I have this Dell Optiplex 7010 workstation and I'm going to stick this Xeon processor in it. Hi, I'm Matt and welcome to Crazy Logic. So the Dell Optiplex range of workstations are a pretty good uh, range of workstations and they're pretty cheap, secondhand on eBay and Facebook Marketplace, etc. Plenty of people have done this before in various Optiplex machines. So why does it work and what to look out for? The Dell 7010 range used the Q77 chipset on the motherboards and it is an LGA1155 socket. The Q77 chipset supports both Sandy Bridge 2nd generation and Ivy Bridge 3rd generation CPUs through BIOS upgrades. According to Dell, the fastest or best CPU that can go into these is the i7-3770. The i7-3770s are processors that have held their value well on the second hand markets which makes looking into Xeons uh, a better option as they are cheaper. So having a look at CPU upgrade website, you can see many CPU options but not the Xeons. Looking at the wiki for the Ivy Bridge processors, in the Xeon E3 section you'll see a number of options for the LGA1155 processors and you'll also see that all Ivy Bridge processors with one, two or four cores report the same CPU ID and a lot of people report that you can use the same CPU ID CPUs interchangeably. Other things you'll need to look out for here is the power usage and the thermals. You need to make sure that your new CPU is within the power capability of your motherboard, heatsink and PSU. And for me, I like to keep things simple. So my old CPU is an i3-2120, which is a 65 watt part. So I'll be looking at CPUs in the same power and thermal range as that. Based on this and what I can find availability for in the UK at the time of filming, the Xeon E3-1240 version 2 was my choice at £25. And it has a thermal or power design of 69 watts. You can see the CPU benchmark table. We're expecting a bump in performance. Enough of the theory. Let's get going. So my 7010 is the one I gave up to move to the HP Z600. I picked it up for 40 quid off eBay. I've put more RAM in it over the years, but I have never upgraded the CPU from the i3-2120. I'm using a GTX 750 Ti for the GPU as the Xeon I'll be installing hasn't got an integrated GPU. First thing to do is to download the latest BIOS and then flash that to the motherboard. Now for some pre-Xeon tests. So uh, Cinebench 23 on the i3 gives me a result of 1125 with a power usage of around 70 watts. So changing the CPU out, a nice blob of thermal paste. Now for some post-swap tests, Cinebench 23 on the Xeon gives me a result of 3399 with a power usage of 83 watts. So as expected, the Xeon 1240 version 2 works in the Optiplex 710 and gives me a nice bump in performance without any obvious issues. Another thing that's not really sort of mentioned very often is that the L1, 2 and 3 caches are also much larger on the Xeons than on the i well the i3 range for instance. So we're going from like 64 to 128 kilobytes of L1 cache, um, 512 to 1 meg of L2 cache and 3 meg to 8 meg of L3 cache. So it's quite a big change in terms of um, on die caching. So if you're thinking of doing this, here's what you need to know or do. You need to be able to look up your CPU IDs and to make sure that you can use those CPUs with the motherboard of your choice. So for instance, the, um, the 790, the 7010, the 720 all use different chipsets and therefore you have different CPU options that you can and can't use. Once you've selected uh, which one you're going to be using, you need to make sure that you have a... GPU installed if you're going to a Xeon that doesn't have an integrated GPU and you'll also need to make sure that you have the latest or a suitable BIOS. Thanks for watching, I hope this has been useful. If it has, please uh, hit that like button, subscribe for more content like this, any questions leave them down in the comments below.